All right, so let's take a look at the menstrual cycle, or also known as the uterine cycle. Uh, so these are looking at changes that occur in the endometrium. Now, as I kind of mentioned earlier before, the endometrium is getting larger for implantation occurs, to, for implantation to occur. And if no implantation occurs, we shed the endometrium and we start over again. All right, so we are starting this here. So this is showing the ovarian cycle occurring. This is showing the menstrual cycle occurring, and these are showing different levels of hormones. All right, so here we're gonna start off essentially the same day here. So day one of the ovarian cycle, day one of the menstrual cycle here. So this is a menstrual phase, so days one through five. So here, menstruation occurs. So this is a shedding of the endometrium of the uterus. So here, estrogen and progesterone levels are at their lowest, and estrogen and progesterone levels are, are going to what are going to cause that buildup of the endometrium. So if they're at their lowest levels now, you shed the endometrium. So after that, starting at day six, this is called the proliferation phase. So here, right, so once again, we're seeing what's occurring in the ovary. Here we're getting the follicles develop, we're getting secretion of estrogen occurring there. So the estrogen secretion is going to cause the endometrium to rebuild itself, and that's what we see occurring here, and to get thicker. All right, and this also causes a thinning of the cervical mucus, uh, which allows sperm to enter into uh, the uterus and eventually get to the floating tubes. All right, so what we see occurring here, ovulation occurs. We get a spike in luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, causing ovulation. Okay, and so now let's look at what's occurring here. So, right, ovulation, that uh, follicle becomes a corpus luteum. All right. So in the secretory phase, the endometrium is preparing for implantation of the embryo, all right? As I mentioned, implantation occurs about a week after fertilization. So we're getting to this area here where you see that endometrium is at its thickest. So here, now we have a corpus luteum. Now we start secreting high levels of progesterone. And so progesterone secretion causes the, the uh, blood vessel formation uh, within the endometrium. So the endometrium gets thicker there. And progesterone also causes cervical mucus to thicken. And this creates what is known as the cervical plug. And so it prevents sperm from entering there. So if we have a, an increase in estrogen progesterone, that's going to cause a decrease in luteinizing hormone, which causes, right, a decrease in corpus luteum activity, which then causes a decrease in progesterone. And so those progesterone levels are going to reduce the blood flow, uh, blood vessels to the endometrium. And so then what happens is the layers of the endometrium start to die and uh, be shed. All right. So that gets us back to uh, the first phase there. All right. So we get menstruation occurring uh, through that time period. Now, menarche, uh, that's a female's first menstrual cycle. That occurs when the ovaries mature and respond to follicle stimulating hormone. And then the granulosa cells produce estrogen and progesterone, which causes the buildup in the endometrium and so on. Menopause is a termination of the menstrual cycle. And so here, uh, it's not the complete lack of eggs that are there, uh, it's a loss. Uh, so here you have few follicles that are left to respond to follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So it's not that you have an absence of these. Once again, you needed several of these to get your estrogen levels up. And so if you just have a few there, your estrogen levels don't get up high enough to cause a buildup of that endometrium. So, and once again, uh, progesterone levels will completely stop. Okay, let's take a look now at a female sexual response. So if we go back uh, to, let's go back to this picture here. So upon sexual stimulation, erectile tissue within the clitoris and around the vaginal openings uh, becomes engorged with blood. Same thing that we talked about uh, with erection with the males, uh, more blood flows into these areas than leaves, all right? Uh, the nipples of the breast will uh, often become erect. Uh, and then the music, mucus glands of the, uh, the vestibule uh, are going to secrete mucus. So also large amount of fluids are extruded uh, from the, uh, through the vagina, through its walls. And this is going to provide lubrication for the penis and the vagina. Uh, with tactile stimulation, that's touch stimulation, and psychological stimulation, this can trigger an orgasm. All right, and this can cause the uterus and fallopian tubes um, to contract rhythmically, uh, and so that's going to help transport the sperm uh, to the egg. 
This is also accompanied by intense pleasure, which is a secretion of dopamine. This is also followed by muscular and psychological relaxation, which is caused by oxytocin. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is that uterus actually tilts a little bit. It doesn't stay in this position. It tilts a little bit, a lot, uh, making it easier for the sperm to enter there. Uh, there is no re uh, refractory period, so you don't have arterioles in these areas uh, vasoconstrict afterwards. Uh, so they are receptive for their stimulation, so there is a possibility for multiple orgasms. Uh, and just as you probably already know, uh, an orgasm is not necessary for fertilization to occur.